The book of Genesis chapter 27, I'll start reading in verse 33. Genesis chapter 27, verse 33. Then Isaac trembled exceedingly and said, Who? Where is the one who hunted game and brought it to me? I ate all of it before you came. And I have blessed him. And indeed he shall be blessed. When Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with an exceedingly great and bitter cry and said to his father, bless me, me also, O oh my father. But he said, your brother came with deceit and has taken away your blessing. Father, we bless you. <laughs> Father, we honor you. Father, I sense something on me that's been on me for months now. It's increasing every day. It's called the blessing. Not just to enlarge my life, but to enlarge those who have chosen to honor and respect what you have placed on my life. So, Father, as I minister the word today, as I always pray, you take a hold of my mind. Think through my mind. Father, strengthen my vocal cords where they don't give out in the middle of a blessing. Fill my lungs with the breath of heaven. Make your people better after I'm done than they were before I started. Because that's what the blessing does. So I completely yield myself to your presence, to your wisdom, like I yielded myself to your servant in the earth. But even more, eternally, you have your hands on me. Eternally, you have blessed me. And eternally, you will bless your people. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 You're standing. You can take your seats. We'll go with... To Numbers 23. Go to Numbers 23. Numbers 23. Numbers 23. Numbers 23. Uh, years ago, while we're turning there, years ago, I, I felt very inferior, very insecure, but I had a Bible. And I started reading through my Bible. And I saw where this empowerment came on people where the blessing was pronounced. And I said, God, that's what I want. And I looked and studied my Bible to see how to get it. I believe I've been successful. I can look around myself. I can look within myself. I've been, I've been successful. Numbers 23, verse 19. Numbers 23, verse 19. I only have three points. Hopefully I don't keep you long. Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? Behold, I have received a command to bless. He has blessed and I cannot reverse it. Verse 21, verse 21. He has not observed iniquity in Jacob nor has he seen wickedness in Israel the Lord his God is with him and a shout of a king is among them strong stuff 
So you hear them mention Jacob in the book of Numbers, which is a long time later. It's the same Jacob who becomes Israel, who becomes a nation. But this same Jacob had a twin named Esau. Rebecca was Jacob's and Esau's mother. And Rebecca understood that this, this pronounced blessing was needed for success. This is still in my messages, the same stuff. She understood that this blessing was needed and she favored Jacob. She said, since your dad is hungry and he sent Esau out to get food, we're going to dress you up like the eldest brother who has already given up his opportunity birthright. Some of y'all don't know where your position. Positions shift when others choose under stress to not be a partaker of what they were born to do. Esau was the eldest, but he was in distress. And his, bro his brother, Jacob, came and said, I'll relieve you if you give me your opportunity. So Esau gave his opportunity. So now mother says, you don't look like him. You don't talk like him. You don't have the same occupation as he has. You don't have the same strength that he has. But we can make you hairy enough to get this blessing. So she positions him, sends him in while his other brother is out preparing to make venison or soup for his father because his father is blind. He can't see. By the time Esau gets back, Jacob has already gone in with a different tone voice and received this empowerment to thrive in life. To overcome any and all obstacles in life. It wasn't that the obstacles weren't there. This that came on him through his father. Gave him that thrust. That when he was facing the gates of hell. He didn't drop to his knees and start crying. And he knew God was going to do something amazing. Some of y'all who have the blessing on you. You're in a pivotal place. And God puts people with blessings on them in hard areas to show how strong he is in God. You wonder why you got in that place? It's because God believed in what he put on you. He could trust you with trouble. Some other people never get in trouble because they don't have enough on them to, just, to sustain them when they're in trouble. So this, this, this blessing now is on Jacob. It's on him now. Esau comes back in and he realizes that the pronouncement of the blessing has already been released. The Bible said he cries out. He's extremely upset, extremely upset, bitter in crying and says, Father, bless me because he understands the importance of it. You don't understand the importance of it because you were raised in a dysfunctional household. And when you're raised in a dysfunctional household, you don't know the importance of the blessing. I was raised in one too. But when I started to read my Bible, I began to alleviate myself of error and then walk in truth. The truth of the matter is I need to get around somebody that favors me enough to say something over my life that breaks all the strongholds and the generational mindsets that will keep me in a trailer when God has a mansion for me. I said I need to serve somebody so well that they see an opportunity in me when I don't even see it in myself. I need to serve so well that when they look at me, they want my future to manifest more than I do. 
Jacob pronounces uh, it, uh, excuse me, Isaac pronounces this blessing on Jacob. Je he, Esau wants the same blessing that Jacob has, but it can't be the same. It, it, it can't be the same. So the father tells him, I, I, I can't give you what he has gotten. I have positioned him. Once I position him, I can't change it. It's already released. It was already announced in heaven. Now we announced it in the earth. There's nothing like a father or a high priest announcing in the earth what has been announced in heaven. Because something has got to say to the warfare that us who are blessed will experience. Something's got to say to the warfare. No weapon formed against him or her will be able to prosper. Drop your rocks. Put your mouth back where it came from because it might curse you if you come against what is already announced in heaven to be blessed and now it's echoed in the earth. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says that Jacob came and he received his brother's blessing with deceit and has taken it. So you telling me while all these folks running around the church unaware that deceit for people can come and position themselves and lean and bend and come into compliance and get what they should have gotten. Absolutely, that's what the Bible tells you. It's not good to be close and foolish at the same time. Well, they took my position. That is the truth. Because you didn't want it bad enough. Whenever you don't know the importance of a thing. In a tormented day, you'll hand it over. No matter how much hell I go through, I said, Lord, I'm not giving up. What you put on me. No matter how heated it becomes. No matter how many religious folks attack my character. I'm not going to give up what you placed on me. Because what they don't know, wherever I go down, I will come back again. Because of what's on me. I'm not giving it up. I'm not going to get so angry with you that I give up. What's on me? Ain't no way you can hurt me to the degree where I give up what always gives me my bounce back power. Say this with me. Say this with me. Father, as we hear this kingdom word today, we combine our faith with this word. Our ability to believe has increased. That which you have promised is released into our lives. We will never come up short. We have faith in your word. No good thing will be withheld from us. Last, last Sunday, I laid my hands on a uh, young man who's going for the pre-draft for the NBA. A few weeks from now, I'll be laying hands on a young man who has just been drafted in Tampa Bay Buccaneers.
Kara, I told them 10 years ago. When, when God gets ready to do a thing. Jermaine, I'm not trying to be understood. Because if they can understand me, they can block me. We are always seeking people to understand. So if they understand you, they can come up with a strategy to stop you. But if they don't understand you, they can stay up all night. They never come up with a strategy. What's on me, what's on you is the ability to overcome all conspiracies. It's better than insurance. The blessing is reassurance. Fortifies itself. The more chaotic it becomes, the more it fortifies itself in the life of those who believe. Got three points. Got three points. We, uh, my, my daughter, she's in Kenya now. We celebrated Kenya. They're, they're, they're watching. They're watching. My sister Sharon, she's in Kenya. So they're, they're watching. She has the blessing on her. But there is something about them that's different than us. And let me tell you what that is. The mentality is different because they never went through the 50s and the 60s. They never went through slavery on a boat. They never had those type of experiences. They never were abused and whipped like that. So those things didn't travel generationally. Because it's not in the dream. They didn't, they didn't experience that. I didn't put an eye on that until Sasha started to interact more and find out more about why we operate a certain way. They, many of them weren't raised by people who were slaves. So they don't have a slavery mentality. So when you speak boldly to them, it is not something that is considered a, a abuse. It is considered empowerment. So they see when you come out like you do, you're empowering me. Well, if you were raised by slaves, you're abusing me. Which means you won't ever get your land and you're always going to be working on somebody's plantation. So the mentality is different. So if you start talking to them about uh, the Mayflower, they don't know nothing about that. Many of them were, were raised with a father and mother in the house. So it's, it's different. So what we have to do is we have to bring a message. And there has to be a shout of a king in the midst of people who think like slaves. I'm going to say that again. There has to be a shout of a king in the midst of people who think submission it's bondage. No, I submit as a son. I get my inheritance when I grow up. So let me let me get into my three points. I only have three. I only have the three. I want you to process that. Maybe you have a distaste for authority because the persons or persons who raised you were oppressed. I come to, let me, before I get into number one, my, my dad was 91 years old. I was born when my dad was about 51. He was a rolling stone. <laughs> uh, and they, when they whip you, they whip you. <laughs> they, they didn't play around. I never did see no blood, but by the way things went back in that day, so, so this is case in point. I was whipped and abused. And I think this is the way. So several generations later, 
because of what's been downloaded on the inside of me. I believe this kind of whipping is necessary because this is what they've done to control me. So now if I want control, I'm going to beat them down. So there's a misinterpretation that flows from generation to generation. I can, my dad has some, you think my hands are big. My dad has some big old hands. And those hands, I never wanted to come down on me. John, John, John didn't know no better. That's my brother. I knew how to dodge. John knew how to get right up under there and cause enough trouble that the hand came down. I had a level of fear because of what I saw. Not that I was in bondage, but I had enough reverential fear that I never wanted to make him angry with me. John, John didn't care. John, if you're listening, this is going to be all right. You know I'm telling the truth. But, but that's where he came from. He tells a story of how his aunt one day when he told her he wasn't going to do something, she slapped him. And all my dad's aunt, they lived a long time. They were, they were tall women. They were, some big old, they were Amazons. They, 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 most, of, most of my dad's aunts were tall as me. And they had big hands too. And he said what he wasn't going to do. And she said, okay, we're going to see about that. And she, she slapped him. He, he rebelled that day. He left home that day. But he never knew the love of a father and love of a mother. So he left with more of a, a slave mentality. That's what he left with. Because they had experienced certain things. So all they functioned in was what they had the knowledge of, whether it was right or wrong. This is a different story. This is not about two boys being slaves. They were twins. This is about two young men who know the importance of the blessing that knows that if I can position myself correctly, I'll have something on me that'll get me through life no matter what day I'm in. <laughs> Stay with me. Now I'm going to get into my points. Number one, kingdom sons and daughters understand the importance of the blessing. Kingdom sons and daughters understand the importance of the blessing. Kingdom, sons and daughters. Those who think not churchy, church thinking, kingdom thinking is totally two different ways of thinking and processing. Church thinking, you're intimidated by everybody that comes around. Kingdom thinking means I have my lane. If you run yours, we all going to do well. <laughs> Kingdom thinking says you're good at what you do. I'll help you do what you do. If I need help, you'll help me do what I do. But we all going to do well. <laughs> Church thinking, oh, the brother done got a little bit higher than me. It means that you stop running your lane. If I get ahead of you, that means that you got so caught up in what I was doing that you didn't keep up with what you're supposed to be doing. And what I understand, I am not competing with you. Because if you ever got in my shoes and grabbed my mic, You wouldn't wonder why I do what I do. And you wouldn't quote scriptures. You'd quote something else. <laughs> Kingdom sons and daughters understand the importance of the blessing. You can't church hop and be blessed. <laughs> you 
You can't hang out with scoffers and be blessed. Those are the ones who talk about the preacher and shout while the preacher's preaching. Sons and daughters always bleed the best, even when their leaders at their worst. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be okay. Mom and daddy going to get this thing together at some point. It's going to be okay. And we're going to be better after this than we were before. So it's going to be okay. So we, we know, and I say we, we know the importance of someone speaking about our destiny because we're haunted by those who spoke and didn't know who we were and they were supposed to be raising us. Don't call me lazy when you don't give me clear direction. I'm at this crossroad. You can't tell me what the next move is. And you say, I'm lazy. I can't go forward because you haven't given me the next orders. I'm not, not picking at anyone. Not picking at anyone. But a husband says that, that says, submit to me, but you're not going anywhere. Submit to what? Well, you, you, you know, the apostle said, for you to be submissive. Well, you got to take me somewhere. I'm taking Lady Davis for the ride of her life. All the evidence of her submission is fruitful. If I'm blessed, look at her. You look at her, you know I'm blessed. But I think he's just too hard. I think I think he needs to change his approach. I need I think you need to get a revelation. They always say, mama ain't happy, ain't no, nobody happy. <laughs> Our daughter, baby girl, is in Kenya right now. But we understand something. The blessing that's on us opens up continents for our seed. I'm, I'm, I'm about to close. I'm, I'm going on. Kingdom sons and daughters. You, you need to be more interested in being a son or a daughter and having a blessing than a title. I am so tired of church titles and no blessing. The ones with the collars on should be the wealthiest people in the earth should carry the DNA of the senior leader of the house. I, I remember being in a meeting. This was back in, um, this was back like March of uh, 2016. March 2016. We're all sitting around a table and my leader is asking, uh, you know, what's your vision? And we go around the table and I hear everybody's vision. They get to me. I said, my vision is your vision. And he had this little smile on his face. I said, maybe in a few years or so, it may change. But as for right now, where you going is where I'm going. What you're doing is what I'm doing. What you're saying is what, I, what I'm saying. It sealed the moment. So I, I don't have to try to come up with something. That's the struggle. You know how many notebooks you can go through trying to come up with something? You know how many scratch pads you can go through? You know how many computers you can run, break, run down? So 
So I find what a blessing. This is the thing with me. Even when my leader was in turmoil, I could still see the blessing. Even when they were walking away, I could still see the blessing. Like there's some still on you that I'm going to get. I'm going to make sure when you in your last moment, I'm right there next to you. Right there with you. I don't care what they said. They never been where you've been. I want to go beyond where you've been. So I want what's on you. I know the importance of having what's on you. I'm already at a disadvantage. I was colorblind and I thought she was light skinned, but she wasn't. Could have got away with it in today's time. Because we wear wigs that make you can't tell the difference sometimes if their pigmentation is light. So I can't, I couldn't get away with it back then. So I said, I'm at a disadvantage, but one thing I know, I have something on me that when I walk into a room, it doesn't matter. It's still going to work for me in that room. Num number two, number two, number two. The blessing should be sought after with diligence. Blessing should be sought after. Not a position, not a raise, not money. Not a title, not opportunity, the blessing from experience, seeking after the blessing, which is the kingdom, seeking after the blessing. I got the money. Seeking after the blessing, I have the opportunity. Seeking after the blessing, I have the peace. That's a path that's all understanding. My church doesn't know me to be a beggar because the blessing says that I now attract whatever I need. But I got to know who I am in the midst of adversity, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of criticism. I got to know who I am. It's my identity that brings forth what I need when I need it. So I wasn't seeking a position. You don't need to put my name on anything. Give me that blessing. Give, give me that blessing. Give me that blessing. That's why Esau wept like he wept. He knew he missed the opportunity of his life. Give me, give me that blessing. You don't have to pay my bills. Give me that blessing. You, no, you, you don't have to follow me around. You will never have to rescue me. Give me that blessing. Because if I have that blessing, all things are working together for the good. And those who love the Lord and all, they call those blessed ones according to his purpose. Where I am, temporary. The pain that I'm experiencing, temporary. The rejection that I experience, temporary. Low places, Temporary. Shortages. Temporary. <laughs> Pain. Temporary. Sickness. Temporary. Everything that doesn't line up with the blessing is temporary. My good days outweigh my bad days. So I don't complain. I'm blessed. I might have singular bad days, but multitude of good days. <laughs> so I sought out the blessing. Lord, I don't even feel worthy. I don't feel credible. I don't feel like I fit. I don't feel like I should be. But I, I want that blessing. I see in my Bible what it does. I want that blessing. I'm not educated enough. I'm not articulate enough. But I want that blessing. I started talking to God like that years ago. God, give me that blessing. If you give me that blessing, there will never be an, a, an amount of embarrassment that can stop me. 
There'll never be a time you give me a platform that I can't stand on. Give me that blessing. You give me that blessing. Because I'm going to do what you need me to do. You just, I'm going to line myself up. And if that blessing is flowing, I'm going to catch it. They don't have to adjust. I will adjust. I'm going to get that blessing wherever it comes. I am. I don't care. It don't matter. Call me whatever you want to call me. I am going to get that blessing. I'm not stubborn. Because you can't be stubborn and position yourself for the blessing. You had to be flexible. You had to be flexible. What is he calling me for? To line you up with the blessing. Why are you texting me? To line you up with the blessing. Why are you letting me participate? To line you up with the blessing. My leader, we were on the phone. He said, I have this message. It's an extraordinary message. He said, but there's something missing. And he starts telling me what his message was about. And I said, I have a book that will fit what you're going to be preaching about. This is Saturday afternoon. I'm cruising around with my girlfriend, my wife. It's almost time for me to shut down for consecration. But as I'm talking to him, he needs more information. I said, hold tight. I'm coming to your state to bring you a book. I was positioning myself. Yeah. See, the luxury of ebooks wasn't as plentiful. So now he has a need and I got to position myself I don't know where you are but I will find you because I have what you need got in my car with my girlfriend got on our 20 started driving because you're going to have everything you need even if I'm depleted in my own pulpit you're going to have everything you need in your pulpit you're going to be ready tomorrow, even if I'm tired, even if I'm fatigued. You're going to have what you need because what I want is on you. I need you to say something to me that my absentee father never said to me. I need you to unlock something in me that my absentee father didn't even know was in me. Tracy, I know people talked about me. I know they talked about me. On social media, they even hear some stuff with me that people were saying. But that's fine. Because it's too late. Because those who talk about you never get a chance to finance you. You can always tell who's not giving because they're always talking. Number three, number, number three, number three, number three, number three, number three, number three. Number three. I'm sorry I'm preaching like we got 10,000 people. But our broadcast on Thursday night has reached almost 60,000. I'm pretty sure by the time it ends, it will be over 70,000 people that Thursday's broadcast has reached. The blessing! 
<laughs> Thank God. You don't have to stay up all night. Yeah, and then, Lord, and watching everything, it takes care of itself. When the blessing is on you, it takes care of itself. It provides for itself. It sustains itself. It overrides the plan of the enemy itself. The Lord said, don't go left, go right. I don't know what they had planned for you in the left, but you went right, so you're going to miss it. I don't know how many traps I missed by being sensitive to what the blessing does. Number, number three, number three, number three, and I'm done. Number three, and I'm done. I was asking God, I said, God, what will work in this pandemic for your people? I wasn't thinking about it for myself. I said, what would work for all the people in this pandemic? He said to me, he said, go into the depths of kingdom teaching. Empower them. Tell them who they are. Tell them how I created them. And tell them what I put on them. COVID understands the blessing. I said, COVID understands the blessing. Because I wasn't looking for a microphone. I really, I really don't even get upset when they don't let me speak. Because I didn't come to speak. I came to wear. See, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I was positioning myself. Not to preach, but to wear. What? Be on them. Be on me. Don't let me get close enough to position myself and think I'm not going to get it. If you want to know something, I believe I mastered it. Well, they welcome me into the room. Don't tell me I can't smell like the fragrance in the room and I'm in the room. You ever smelled like where you've been? I believe the blessing, you're about to be stained with it and the aroma of it. Now, one thing is going to move you forward. Next thing is going to make your haters matter. Number, number three, number, number three, number three, number three, number three. I, I love, I love getting a hold of some of these people that came out of the projects. I just love it. I just love it. I love getting a hold of these people that, that, you know, they, they done went through foreclosure, they went through all kind of foolishness, and then all of a sudden the blessing gets on them. The blessing don't ask your past, can you be successful today? What the blessing does, it starts to cater to you and move you into a better place than what you ever. See, you don't even have past references with what God is doing in your life right now. One, one preacher, I'm going to get into number three. I'm gonna get, give, me, give me a minute. One preacher, he told me, he said, uh, this is years ago. He said, uh, he said I could give you advice when, uh, when you were at 200 people. He said, I could give you advice at 300 people. He said, I could even give you advice at 400 people. He said, I only had 500 people in my membership. And he said, when you got beyond 500, I could no longer advise you. This blessing is going to cause you to have to have a new advisory team. I said, this blessing is going to cause you to have to have a new advisory team. So your partner ain't going to be able to help you with this. One. one more thing. One more thing before I get to number three. One more thing. One more thing. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Y'all good? My original CPA told us, myself and my wife, he said, when you get to a certain point and I start to make mistakes, but you don't need mistakes when it comes to your finances. He said, when I start to make mistakes in error, that's a sign that you have outgrown me. 
He said, then you need to find another CPA. That's what he told me. He, we sat across the desk from him, and that's what he told me. We got to a certain point that he started making mistakes. We got to a certain point where we started seeing error. Because, see, he's the CPA while we see in the error. You're the smartest one. So when we get to that point, he's already told us what we need to do. I believe some of y'all who are blessed, you already know what to do. <laughs> Whether you want to or not, it's time for an upgrade. So every business partner that we have, they got to be able to handle what the blessing produces. Oh, we got to open up our eyes for somebody else. So we moved on to another company. We didn't have a choice. We're not going to jail. <laughs> Number three and I'm done. Number three and I'm done. That was just for all of you who still got the same friends for the new place you're going. <laughs> they should become acquaintances. Number three, once a blessing is transferred, it can't be reversed. Balaam and Balak had gotten together. You have to be careful when uh, these prophets get derailed, I'm not talking about the ones we ordain, I'm not talking about, you know, you know, Sister Yolanda, because we'll consecrate her later this year, possibly in September. I'm talking about the ones that have not been validated. Get derailed by some other entity. And now he's been hired to curse God's people. That's what's happening in the, in the book of Numbers, chapter 23. You'd be surprised how many people want to curse you. So the attempt to curse is in motion. Most, most, most derailed prophets won't listen to the donkey. Because the donkey tried to tell him, no, there's an angel with a sword drawn right up the road. So you better stop your mess. If I had not rubbed you up against the wall, you would have went right into the hands of premature death. Read the story. It's all in your Bible. The hired prophet attempts to curse what the blessing has already been released on. His, his mouth is turned towards cursing. But when he opens up his mouth, he says, behold, I have received a command to bless. He has blessed and I cannot reverse it. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, the thing of it is, they've been working a long time to curse you, and it hasn't worked yet. They've been wanting to stop you for a long time. I don't know who they are, but it hasn't stopped you yet. Let me tell you why it hasn't stopped you. Put your hands on your chest and say, there's a blessing on me. Which means no weapon formed against the blessing that's on you shall be able to prosper. Can somebody shout an amen there?
That thing is transferring. That thing is transferring. In this season of my life, I'm Lord, I'm asking God, why is so much on me? He says, for the transfer. And that's why you got to get around people who understand legacy. When you understand legacy, you're trying to transfer. You're trying to make a deposit. You got to take the lid off of your head, baby, so that God can get something to you that mama and them couldn't get to you. Daddy and them couldn't get to you. And your religious setting could not get it to you. only thing that can happen to you is sin puts you in neutral but it can't reverse the blessing I said sin can put you in neutral but it can't reverse the blessing so guess what when you pray that prayer of repentance it puts you back in drive <laughs> That's why I'm not afraid to repent because it puts me back in trial. What a blessing let off, it picks back up. How many of y'all just got picked back up in the blessing? How many around the world just got picked back up in the blessing? You're no longer in neutral, baby. You're walking now in the blessing. Thought it would never work for me, didn't you? Thought it would never shift for me, didn't you? No, baby. Jesus came and prayed the price so I wouldn't have to stay in neutral. Jehovah Jireh, who is my provider? Blessing me most, both morning, noon, and night. Just shift at me. Oh, we just engaged, baby. We just engaged. I said, we just engaged. I said, we just engaged. When you are in neutral, you are disengaged. But now you are engaged. You're not in park. You're not in neutral. You're in tribe. I dare you to shout about it. I dare you to praise God about it. There ain't no reverse. Not going back. COVID-19 can't push me back. Haters can't push me back. Critics can't push me back. Yeah, I won't go back. Sasha, we gonna be greater when you get back than we were when you left because we're in dry, baby. There's an elevation taking place. There's a blessing on us. Lay your hands on your chest again. Say, there's a blessing on me. Shifting some folks this morning. What you thought was a negative detour was a positive reset. It's no coincidence that you're hearing me today. The struggle is out of your blessing. Loose him and her and let them go. I'm 
closing. Ms. Watkins, I need you to drive back to Birmingham again in the next two weeks because I'm going to lay my hands on you. You knew how to reach out and get in touch with me. God knows how to touch you. He drove all the way from Georgia. Because <laughs> you were diligent. I'm going to get it. I decree before I put my hands on you, raises, increase, promotions, opening of opportunity. Before I put my hands on you, all I'm going to do is push you in overdrive when I lay my hands on you. You're already moving, woman of God. Can't nothing stop you. You're going to be surprised at how far people drive to get a hold of what is considered the blessing as part of the kingdom. My God. Father, as we close this service, we believe that something it's not a something, but it's called a blessing. It's an energy that propels your people into the greatest times of their lives where they become givers, not lenders. And lenders, but not borrowers. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that the wells will never one try because of the blessing. Father, I believe in what you placed on me. I believe it without cheerleaders, without audience, without other counsel. I know you've done it. And I thank you for it. And you bless me to be a blessing. So you have blessed them to be a blessing. So have your way. Remain in the atmosphere. Remain into the confines of their homes, their residence, their cars, whatever they own, whatever they occupy. Let the power of that blessing be upon it today. Never let it leave because it cannot be reversed. We thank you. We bless you. They're not slaves. They're free men and women. Free to obey you. To obey your word. To fulfill the destiny and the purpose that you place within them. Years before they experience adversity. Renew it now. Heal the pain of those who have lost loved ones recently touch them lift them strengthen them make them whole because that's what the blessing does so we thank you and we bless you today in the name of our king jesus christ amen 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 well i'm done those of you who've already given those of you who want to give to what we usually call generational giving that's all going to debt cancellation. Lady Davis has a check we, gen we give each month in that. That's up to you what you want to do. We're going to do what we do because we're blessed. Those of you who have already walked up here and given, you don't have to repeat it because we're not trying to manipulate you or coerce you into anything. But we know that in this atmosphere and on your life, rest that same blessing, the same stuff. Walk in it, utilize it. Don't sit there and say, I'm blessed. Apply yourself. Apply yourself in some form. Apply yourself. Don't have a dream and not move towards it. If you have a dream, if you have a, have a plan, walk towards it, make some calls, go visit some people, walk towards the dream that you have. Watch God prove the blessing on your life. God bless you all. Enjoy the rest of your day. We love you, myself, Lady Davis. And you are triumphant. And can't nobody do nothing about it. God bless you.